What is up, pizzas? Corey Vincent here, and this is a new episode of Video Game Bang, episode 413. Wow, that's a lot of episodes. Uh, I am Corey Vincent, and you obviously know this is Video Game Bang. If it's your first time listening, we are Sacramento's number one geek and gaming podcast. Brought to you by Oblivion Comics and Coffee, Sacramento's number one spot for comics and coffee. Gamersubs GG, use that code word uh, VGB to save yourself 10%. We're also brought to you by Vast GG. They are one of the number one esports marketing companies in the world. Uh, which isn't surprising because esports is so niche and uh, they're doing things at a very high level. Also, uh, do we have any other, what's the other sponsor? I feel like I'm forgetting someone. Oblivion? You said Oblivion. Fast? Fast, we said fast. We good? Pocket? Pocket Asian. Pocket Asian! Pocketing <laughs> all of the Asians. Uh, he's the number one benefactor of the show <laughs> and one of Emma's best friends. Emma, how you been? I'm good. Our, can we get into some stuff because oh. we played Sea of Thieves last night <laughs> and I was going above and beyond to be nice and be courteous and help the team and you just shat on me the whole night. I did no such thing. And then, oh, we'll get into that in a minute. Joining us, <laughs> uh, it's, been a, it's been a minute since he's been on the show, it but he's got his minute. own podcast. He's the very first spinoff. If we were Happy Days, he's Laverne and Shirley. Wow, uh, I'll take that. I'll that's take good. that. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good thing. actually a really good compliment. Eddie from the Film Philosophers. What is up, guys? It's been a while since I've been on the show, but uh, it's good to be back. It's good to be uh, in the old stomping grounds, if you will. I wanted to give you your space, a time to evolve as a podcaster. And you, you know what? You have, actually. Like, honestly, a lot of the stuff that I know, this is going to sound really corny and cliche, but oh, yeah, Mr. Please. Vincent actually taught me. So, oh, yeah. Keep you coming. Know, Keep I, it coming. Just, you know. That's about, that's about it. Feed the ego, Don't tell please. Them that. We're never going to hear the end of it. Yeah, I know. Right. Well, I'm just saying, I mean, you got to give due where credit is due, right? I'm yeah, just... and you, you've grown. You you started as you and Chad, but now you've added a new uh, yep. co host in Spencer, who I know yep. very well. I love that guy. Oh, yeah. Spencer's great. And so now we got a little trio going on. Uh, we debut every week on Wednesday morning. And uh, yeah. Okay, we're going to talk some movies because Emma's a huge movie buff. She's always talking it, about sure. Oscars and Emmys and all that kind of stuff. And I I cannot give her any kind of back and forth in that area. Emmys uh, are TV. Really? Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> uh, and Curtis, back on the program. What's going on, man? Oh, snap. Man, I'm just up here, you know, uh, enjoying... Myself <laughs> and everyone else on the podcast. I mean, it was your first time, uh, like, getting to sit down for an extended period of time with Eddie, so I, I apologize, first oh, of all. Oh, no, no, it's okay. You can't keep his hands off me, but that's all right. <laughs> I mean, who can, right? Oh, see? See, see? Look, look at that. that. Yeah. He, he's a habitual line crosser. He is. But, but that's okay. why we love him. It's only, and, it, and, he, and I can tell. I feel the love. I feel the oh, love. Yeah. Uh, literally, I just felt the love on my knee, but we won't talk about that. Yeah. Mean, what happens under the table doesn't have to be on the show, you know. You just gotta keep that on the DL. But no, no, see how it is. It's one of my favorite things. You already like broke the wall. People come into our chat on Twitch.tv and they always think we're in different rooms because for some reason people don't like get together anymore. And every time they watch a podcast, it's like, oh, they. I just assumed everyone was in different areas. So we break those walls because there's something about that live energy of being together that we don't get to see very often. This is true. This is true. This, this is, is true. true. Uh, what, where should we start? There's so much stuff going on in the world. Let's start with Sea of Thieves, because last <laughs> night there was a big update called the Cursed Sales, and we had ourselves a little adventure. A little one. A little, a little one. We got sidetracked quite a few times. We did. Uh, what did you think of the update, Emma? Uh, it could have been better. It was good. I feel like my expectations might have just been too high. Uh, the campaign was a little, I don't know. Loose. A little loose. A little loose, we'll say. It, I, 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 the ghost ships are fun. Yeah, That's but we fun. only saw like one. Yeah, because you got to be in the right place at the right time. We didn't figure out until like four hours in that it's not real days, it's in-game days. Yeah, yeah. So we're like, all right, August 1st to August 9th, it'll be this. And it's like, no, it's not. It's not that at all. Yeah, so the game is like, <sighs> there's no direction. You kind of have to go there, know who to talk to. When you drop in, there's no like... Nothing spelled out for you. Yeah. And so you kind of have to listen to clues and hearsay. And then we met like a tiny little bird who was made out of bones. And yeah. Did, yeah. did you pick oh, up any storyline? So yeah. No, I got the storyline. I understood it. It was just, I don't know. There, I wish there was more to it. I wish it was a meteor story. 
I guess. Yeah. Like there was, I'm, I'm wondering if at the end of the month there's like a big final boss battle against this woman or if all the ships that we're facing are just her ships and that's what it is. The great thing about this game still is the fact that you could start your own adventures. Like when you go in there, no one's storyline is going to be like anybody else's because yeah. everything's so dynamic based off of the other players in the world at the time and stuff like that. So we jumped in. It was myself, Emma Skies, the real David Webb, uh, Sir Aaron Carter. And we jumped into the world. And one of the new features they offer is that now they didn't make it like extended parties past four, but your group of four can meet other people ships there's a secondary flag you could join an alliance mm -hmm. to where you don't have to split loot the old-fashioned way mm. so before when i think i was with you remember like we did a, a pick them we'd all bring the chests out and if you wanted yeah. to work together it'd be like okay i want that chest and then the next team would pick theirs and you yeah. go your separate ways this you could just split the loot evenly you don't yeah. have to worry about that now i want to bring the other guys here because <laughs> we had a bit of a a, a spat our, spat. our group <laughs> spat here it's i spat. i'm known Cold to go snap. rogue and okay. we'll kind of Indeed. explain it. And I want to hear what you guys think because sure. I could have been okay. in the wrong, and I'm ready to admit that. Okay, you're wrong. You're wrong. There you go. It's okay, just, let's just move on. I appreciate both of you Next and topic. your 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 talented opinions. Thank I you. Mean, hey, and we're, uh, we're you're an important voice here. in this conversation. Yeah, we're very. Yeah, educated like two on seconds this. ago, she was on the, <laughs> 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 like, she's on the other side of this argument. So we start off. We, we find this rando dude who happens to know where the thing is. Uh, Numbnuts. Numbnuts. Our good Numbnuts. friend Numbnuts. <laughs> you guys just wanted to say his name. That's the only reason you wanted to party with him. You just want to talk about Numbnuts all night. Numbnuts. <laughs> we follow the Numbnuts, whose name that. ended up being pretty fitting. So we end up following Numbnuts <laughs> into the abyss, and we find another ship. And uh, it's a group of uh Three or four? I think it was a group of three. I think so. You were, I wasn't on their ship. They So our group goes straight into the fight. And the first thing I do is jump onto the other guy's ships. I don't know why. I just felt compelled <laughs> to see like what was going on. I'm I nosy. mean, hey, when you gotta go, you gotta go. So right. they're they have one guy in the brig for some reason, <laughs> and their ship is sinking. Like they're going uh, down. They've been fighting this thing for a long time, and they're like, "We're out of supplies. We're out of supplies." I jump onto the ship, and they're like, "Oh my god, we've been boarded!" And I go, "I'm friendly. I'm friendly." Mm -hmm. And I start bailing water for them, and I have planks on me, so I sp start patching their holes because they're all out of planks. And so as I'm doing this, these guys are just murder. They're fighting. And so I hear them fighting. It's peaceful kind of on this ship. And then they took down the ship. And so we got the commendation and everything. Mm -hmm. But there's a whole bunch of chests in the water. Mm -hmm. And they're like, dude, uh, thank you so much for saving us. Because they were going down, down. Uh, this is all on video. If you go to Twitter, uh, our VGB Twitter I put together a highlights package. Ah, and nice. I want Yes, you did. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> because I am, that. Because I am petty. <laughs> At least you're honest. I spent you six go. hours on this <laughs> two-minute I mean. video. <laughs> it's, a, it's a labor of love. Then they're like, oh, my God, this random stranger just saved us. Uh, let's split the loot. Like They're, they're super grateful. They're mm -hmm. like, can you help us get all these chests? And I thought it was going to be a couple. And then I'm like, okay, then I'll jump back on our ship. Mm -hmm. I jump into the water. It's a bunch of chests. Mm. Like uh, the same amount you get from a big raid battle. Yeah, from okay. a stronghold. I help them put everything back on. We, we're like shifting away. I help them turn it in. And meanwhile, these guys are fighting the whole time. So I kind of abandoned them. Well, let's be clear. We were dying. Uh, dying. We were dying. Okay. Well, All right. thank you for the details. I was going to say, that there's, there's clarification there. Okay, yeah, absolutely. It. They are so into this battle. They don't even know I'm gone. Because Cause they're fighting for their lives. Yes. <laughs> It, until we start turning in chests, and then yeah. they're like, "Wait, where where are you, Corey?" I'm yeah, like, like, there came a point like <laughs> like I'm steering Aaron and Weber on uh, on on the cannons, and they're trying to shoot everything, and they're bailing water, and we're turning sails, and we're like, "Where the fuck is Corey?" <laughs> and then, but then money, cha ching, cha ching. Like mm -hmm. I I I mean I went with these other guys. <laughs> I didn't know how the party system worked. I didn't know like if I needed to be there when they turned it in. I, yeah. I'd heard that they could turn their backs on you and stuff. Yeah. So I'm having a moment like they're like asking me all sorts of questions. We get there, unload everything. And I'm like, guys, I need to go back to my crew. Can we go give them a, some assistance? Yeah. And they fill me in on how the game works. And that raid was going to keep going. So they were fighting the entry level ships. They would have had to beat the whole thing. And there was like only one day left. So there's no way they would have gotten the booty that we'd just gotten away with. Wow. Yeah. So they're like, oh, and we're going to go off on our own adventure. So I was like, all right, dudes, I'm going to catch a mermaid, head back to my friends. And uh, then like, as I'm going away, they're like, hey, hey, one last question, guy. Are you a legendary pirate? And I turn over to them and I say, in my own mind. 
<laughs> and then I jump into the ocean and start swimming <laughs> just randomly. Wow. And as I'm going away, I can hear them still. And they're like, great answer. Great answer. <laughs> so I got to have the best CSI. Yeah. Oh, my God. Moment. Like, I- Meanwhile, our ship is sinking. <laughs> We're dying. We don't know where Corey is. We don't know what's going on. All we know is he abandoned us. Oh, my God. This guy's putting his shades on in front of an explosion, and these guys over here stringing for their life. Okay. <laughs> That's all you had to say. You could set the entire story in just like that. <laughs> so, oh Emma, God. from your perspective, what was happening? Uh, we pull up to this fight. And Corey immediately leaves, and we don't see him again. <laughs> and we're we're circling the ships, we're firing, we're trying to take out the ship. We don't even know what's going on. It's our first ghost ship, and so I'm I'm steering. Aaron and Webb are on each cannon. They're running back and forth. They're running downstairs to get cannons and come back up and bailing water and moving the sails. And we're like, I feel like we're one person short. I feel like one more person would make. Where's Corey? <laughs> <laughs> Did he ever come back? No. Nope. Okay. Nope. He's so off gallivanting. Actually, I was watching your highlight, and it's so funny because on your side, you're just like, oh, dude. <laughs> yeah. You can hear us dying in the background in my stream because we're in Discord, so you can hear right. both sides happening simultaneously. Right. Right. Yeah. And me, it's like the guys asking, "How fast can you turn around?" <laughs> you know, and I'm showing them and stuff. Like we're goofing off and stuff, but making money. Hey. I and, mean, and to be fair, I came back once I secured the loot to die with the crew. The so I did go down with you guys. I mean, I, I mean, I probably showed up way too late. <laughs> I mean, hey, if you came back and you brought loot, I mean, that's a win. Yeah, I guess you I know, thought I, so. So I'm, uh, yeah, I, I gotta say that's a, that's still a win in my book. Okay. Hmm. What do you oh, think? You're, you're Should I, did, I? But I, I abandoned my crew, man. Ha, yeah. How'd your crew feel about it? I don't think they were too happy. Okay. Well, then, bad job. Bad teammate. Yeah. Bad you teammate. Gotta gotta support the crew, man. You know, I mean, <sighs> money ain't the money. Money doesn't solve everything. You can't just be like, oh, you guys are dead. You know, let me, I don't know, let me make it rain on you a few dollars while well, you guys are going, dying. Going back further. So we jump into this game oh, and boy. immediately Corey finds this guy, Numbnuts. Mm-hmm. And he's like, <laughs> and then. I feel like you guys only hang out with this particular guy just so just you can say, say that. Name. Like, absolutely. so we followed Numbnuts. So Numbnuts here. So <laughs> That's we absolutely would, why Corey wanted it. Yeah. Okay. Numbnuts. Uh, numbnuts. So we're and all in. kind of on the ship and, and Corey's in. like, all right, yeah, we'll follow you. Like, let's hang out with you, dude. Like, let's do this thing. And the rest of us are like, all right. Or, or I guess we have a rando now. <laughs> yeah, we're just just adopting people off the street, huh, Corey? Here's to that end. I, <laughs> I, I, All right. I am a rebuttal. That's I am story. friendly. I like to call it friendly. friendly. Until until we we met this other dude who was a legendary pirate. By Blue the way. balls. This I, his <laughs> name was <laughs> something. I, I have no idea. Who he was a cane li- scrotum. He was by himself <laughs> in a sloop and really giving these dudes like work, and we were kind of helping him. And I was on his ship again. I, I end up on other people's I ships. Saw. We ended There's up with here. we ended up with him on this island that. thing, and he's mm-hmm. talking on a megaphone to the, to my crew while mm-hmm. I'm on his boat. And I asked them in the Discord, "Is like, do we want to play with this dude, or do we want to go help him?" And they gave me the no. So I was and like, you "All did right." It anyway, <laughs> I pulled out my shotgun and I just blasted him. Oh, nice! And well. like Emma in <laughs> horror was like, "Ah!" Like, 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 and then she starts yelling, "Twitch clip! Twitch clip!" <laughs> But here's why I love Emma and why she's who I want with me in a zombie apocalypse. After sh- the sh- initial shock, she goes, let's sink a ship. <laughs> <There we go. laughs> he was going to spawn and he was going to chase us. And I was like, all right, I didn't make this mess, but I'm going to fucking clean it up. That's right. right. That's right. Emma's oh, the type of friend rectify. where after you she after you murder somebody, she's going to be mad at up. you. and she, But she'll help you clean it up yeah. first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and then the you'll body. get to it. It was fun. It's Allegedly. Up. Allegedly. 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 Dump the body. And then I'll write a book and call it, If I Did It. (laughs) (laughs) If. And I'll make a lot of money. Here we go. Uh, Allegedly. Are you going to go back to Curse Sales or do you feel like you had. I will. We played for like five or six hours and and we kind of beat it, but I don't know if we did. I will because there's. It sounds like there's two other campaigns. I'm wondering if they're the same thing, just with different names. Because it, because we did. There's three regions. There's where we were, the Shores of Plenty, or whatever the fuck it's called. And then there's two other regions on the map. And each region has its own sort of campaign, I guess, because it told mm-hmm. us to talk to San, t- told us to talk to somebody at Daggertooth, and told us to talk to somebody else at Plunder. And I was like, I guess there's a whole other story, so I'll probably do those. And then I just want to fight some ghost ships. I know. I feel those like cursed cannonballs are sick. Yeah. Did you actually get to use them or have them used on you yet? Yeah, they were using them on us. So there's new in the game. There's a new mechanic where you, there's cursed cannonballs, where if mm-hmm. the bad guys hit you with it, mm-hmm. everybody on the ship just starts dancing. 
Hey. And it's really frustrating because like your sip. Sh- your How long does it last though? Way so it's too like, long. Yeah. So it's like the dubstep. I don't know. We, we didn't see that one. We exactly. There's, <laughs> there's another there's one. Throwback. Yeah. There's one where it'll if it hits your ship, it drops your anchor. Oh snap. Mm. Uh, oh, I didn't see that one. Yeah, I don't think we had that. We had one used against us. It was just like purple smoke, and I wasn't entirely sure what it did. Hmm. But it did make uh, it yeah. just made Purple. us all really high. Made everybody high. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. Five minutes later, I was like, I got the munchies. <laughs> I don't think that was a cannonball. That was a <laughs> cannabis ball. <laughs> nice. You, you're you welcome. Woo! Terrible. Zingers. These guys are getting along well. Cannabis that ball. That was that was good. gold. That was gold. <laughs> Thank you. That was bronze, I, maybe. Well, Eddie, don't you have a podcast? Maybe I could be a guest sometime. <laughs> Uh, talk us through some of the movie. What's going on in movie world, Eddie? Because it's been a while since we've gotten to hear from you. I, mean, I haven't talked to you even since like Avengers came out, and you just saw Christopher Robin. So, like, what what is the status of the movie world right now? Right now, like the biggest thing for movies is like it, everything is about nostalgia. I was actually just talking about it today with somebody. Everything's about going back, whether if it's in history or with something that you know we remember as kids. Everything's about nostalgia right now. So, like Christopher Robin, it's going to do great. Not only because it's a Disney film, but it hits on every single one of those uh, 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 facets of like nostalgia that everybody remembers as a kid. I mean, if you were younger, I'm pretty sure everybody here were, was or is old enough to have seen like the new adventures of Winnie the Pooh mm-hmm. yeah. and stuff like that. This hits on all that, especially when you nice. hear Jim Cummings as the voice of both Pooh and Tigger. Wow. So, and uh, Ewan McGregor, Obi Wan Kenobi, can't go wrong. Of course. So, He's in it. Is yeah. he Christopher Robin? He's Christopher Robin. As an adult, all grown up. As yeah, dude. This what's the what's the plot? So here's the thing. So it's not spoilers. No spoilers. But what is it? Which I can't talk about spoilers anyway because the embargo. Oh yeah. But Mm -hmm. the film is pretty much Christopher Robin ends up getting sent to boarding school and is forced to grow up essentially. So he can't go back to the hundred acre wood or spend time with them and whatnot. And um, he essentially grows up, becomes a man. Gets a job, gets married, oh, that's, goes to oh, war. No, he goes to World no War II way. and ends up coming back, has a kid that was born after, you know, he got deployed. And uh, and now he's working this nine to fiver that he's always busy at, doesn't have time for his daughter, rarely has time for his whole family. Not that he doesn't want to. It's just that his job is always asking of him to do more and Dude, more. Dude, I don't even care about Winnie the Pooh and I already want to go see it now. Yeah. And so he's forced to like stay in London on a weekend that he was supposed to go with his family to like a cottage and Haley Atwell who plays his wife which <gasps> so she's hot. in it yes. oh yeah Agent Peggy Carter Peggy Carter in it. and uh they they leave and he ends up having this little moment where he's just so confused and then all of a sudden Winnie the Pooh shows up and uh adventures ensue what so it's actually really good it it'll it's targeted more for like the older demographic but like younger kids will get it but it's more for us well yeah just just that plot is so like macabre like the the word the nine to five and like so many people are like i'm doing that that right now oh my gosh (laughs) i mean where's my winnie the pooh for real (laughs) so and not to mention like once this film gets out and the toys start selling like all that crap's gonna sell like hotcakes like it's gonna go quick in fact i think all the pre-sales are all already out of stock you Dang. can't order any of the plush toys that they they're making for the movie. I um, want one. So, and they're not cheap, they're not expensive either, like 24, 25, 30 bucks. Dang. So, aside from that, I mean, you also we're well within summer blockbusters, so you got The Meg coming out next week. Mm-hmm. Oh god. Uh, you have uh, a, a lot of little actually a lot of independent films that are coming up. I was just talking to Curtis uh, before we went on about um, Sorry to Bother You, yep. which is a really great yeah. film that debuted a couple weeks ago. Um, actually, almost a month ago. Uh, then you have um, there's another one called Three Identical Strangers. It's actually really good. The Mister Rogers um, yeah. documentary. Oh, the Tom Hanks thing. Yeah. No, no, no. The documentary. No. Won't you be my neighbor? How is he making this huge comeback, Mister Rogers? Yeah, because isn't there a nostalgia. Tom Hanks thing coming out too? And okay, it's all. When's nostalgia. the Bob Ross bio biopic coming out? Uh, probably. Who knows. I don't know. There's all this, like I said, nostalgia is like the biggest thing right now. So if it's if it's something that has to do with our childhood or has to do with something from us growing up or even crap like uh, I was talking to somebody today about history stuff that nobody even cared about, like Dunkirk and all that kind of stuff, stuff that we didn't know about in our history books. Right. Uh, people are, are putting it out there on the big screens and watching it. So I, I give it maybe another six months and we'll kind of transition to the next big thing. We're getting the same thing in video games. 
See? Like we, yeah. the, the Crash uh, trilogy, the Spyro trilogy coming back wow. out. Yeah. Like uh, Banjo, Kazooie, and all sorts of crazy stuff. Yeah. Nobody wants to be an adult <laughs> because times kind of suck. I know. That's why the Christopher True. Robin thing is so fascinating. It is. And, and mind you, it's not like it, it doesn't kind of play to the whole horrific part of him being an adult and whatever too much. It, it allows for there to be like whimsy and, and moments of like him using imagination, kind of like how he did when he was a kid. Because um, the great thing about this, about Ewan McGregor, is he can easily embody like the heart of Christopher Robin from the cartoons. Mm -hmm. And it totally jumps into that at a certain part in the film where he just, he has to be the old Christopher Robin. Right. And right. seeing Ewan McGregor act like a crazy person on, you know, and with all the rest of his friends, it's, it's super cool. So. Nice. I'm excited for that. Whoa! Wow! Whoa, what? Oh, man. What? 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 Are you Come kidding punch. me? What? what? What podcast gods right what now of all times <laughs> i'm sorry eddie i would love to talk about christopher robin the entire show i really would but I have we no can't idea what just happened that is the what you playing theme song where uh, the podcast go. gods you, you pray to the podcast gods i'm sure i used you, to film philosophers and yeah i yeah. You, i transitioned to the the film gods now oh, okay. yeah, oh the yeah, film gods all right. yeah well, I, I have right. to i have to appease them in order for them to let me get into movies now every podcaster will tell you there are gods to appease there are and <laughs> these <laughs> ones demand to know what we've been playing and uh, so basically, I've been keeping track since the beginning of time. Uh -oh. uh, Emma, doing surprisingly well. So we're going to let you uh, continue on picking up some extra points uh, with you going first. What you been playing? Oh, uh, recently redeveloped an insane obsession with Minecraft. <gasps> <gasps> Anybody who follows you on social media is not surprised right yeah. now. Because it, 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 <laughs> not <laughs> stop. I can't stop. What's what? Okay, did you have a long history with it before? I mean, I've played it before. I've had I've had days, you know, where you just you lose ten hours and you're just like, what the fuck? You don't see the sun mm -hmm. because you've been mining all day. Mm -hmm. But I haven't uh, I haven't played it in a very long time. Like I haven't even opened it since last year, and I think I haven't played it probably in a couple of years. And there was just like this moment the other night where I was like, you know, what we should play Minecraft. Oh, and I no. reinstalled it, and the next day we had a fifteen and a half hour straight play oh, session. Jeez. <laughs> Dang. So I got in on a little bit of the action. I haven't played since uh, it was a Java game. So Good Lord. yeah, it's been years. And but when I played, like I was in, I was in PvP servers. Like I had to make secret bases because people would grief you. Like yeah. you had to sneak, be sneaky about it, and make like plots. Like one time, one of my best capers was there was this rival team. And I knew they were loaded with good stuff, and I had good stuff too. Is this the the, the dynamite story? Yes. Okay. I made. I, like I, this story. I found a cave, and I rigged it with explosives. And you, there was a lot of private chats going, mm -hmm. and I pretended like I fudged my coordinates, like it was supposed to be a private chat, but I messed up the command, so everyone saw it as bait. Yeah. And this guy, I remember his name, Uncle Hammy. <laughs> Within like five minutes, comes to those coordinates. Into the cave, triggers my alarm, <laughs> explodes. His armor is so good he survives, but I'm able to finish him with a single arrow. Nice. Oh my god! And I take his stuff. That's how like meta the game got. <laughs> is you you were playing the people, not the game. Nice. Here's the thing. So Corey and I actually, aside from podcasting, we actually used to work together. Okay. Oh, so yeah. I remember we would sit just not too far from each other, and he would talk about all the servers that he was on. He even created his own server. Like, And I remember this story mm -hmm. came across to every single new hire that came in that talked I about it. I had to tell him. It was like a badge of honor. So that's oh why immediately God. when he started, I'm like, he's going to do the dynamite story. Yeah. I knew every it. Time. It's all your fault, too. I blame you. Hey, this hey one, You wouldn't hey be now. bringing up bad memories if you hadn't said anything. So. What's dope, though, is for people who played the Java, the OGs, the, oh, yeah, if you guys played it and you can remember your logins, if you sign in to Mojang's website, it gives you a free token to download the new version, okay. which is all cross-play. So you're playing with people on the Switch, Xbox, right. PC. But not PlayStation. Not PlayStation. Not PlayStation. Bwah, bwah, bwah. Yeah, they, they refuse to flip that Switch. Yeah. But yeah. it was super nice. And so I, within a couple minutes, I had the game installed. They sent me an invite to the server, and it was... A rush of nostalgia. It was. Yeah, because we did 15 and a half hours that day. The day that you were on, we did uh, almost seven hours stream, which was a whole experience. Yeah. I have never interacted with the Minecraft community, oh, but yeah. apparently it's a bunch of dickbags. 
<laughs> I, I was just hearing her side because I, I wasn't streaming. I don't think. I think I was just playing. I was just. I went and found my own little mine, and I just started digging. And then I hear her though, like, oh, ban that guy, please. Mods, mods, ban that asshole. <laughs> no, ban that guy. And I'd never heard her ban so many people. I have never. Not only have I never banned so many people in one stream, I banned more people in one stream than I have ever banned in the entirety of my channel. Wow. Jeez, is it Minecraft was that bad. bad? Like, it was so bad. I'm like. Where are you people coming from? I just want to <laughs> dig and build things. And all the people who were banned from everywhere else is I where guess. they end up at. So. <laughs> yeah, I I'm know, like, right? damn, this is I the last resort. Yeah. This is the, the dumpster of all the video game bans here. So. Apparently. It was, it was ridiculous. What kind and of then, stuff were you banning them over? Uh, like, what, what happened? Was it a lot of just sexist comments? It was overly sexual comments geared toward me. People telling me to take <laughs> my clothes off. Oh, what? my God. Uh, racism. A lot of dropped N-bombs. Oh, oh, my God. It was no like, way. it was just, ugh. Anybody start like, with greeting, Miss Guys? <laughs> not, not this time. Not, not this time. No, That's it was just, story. it was so weird. It's bad. I'm like, Minecraft is like in my mind such like a happy, peaceful, oh, like, nice no, little game because no. I don't do <laughs> PvP. Okay, there you go. Right. I mean, if I anything, the fact that he's got history in it alone should tell you what kind of <laughs> I'm people. I'm not are. fair. And enough. I was on the good side. Damn, I was a good guy, sort of. It was just, it yeah. was weird. It was good guy. Good so I love yeah. Minecraft, but streaming it was interesting. Are you going to continue to stream it? You think I might every once in a while, but I couldn't. I could not be like a Minecraft streamer. Oh no way! And I was talking to other people on like Twitch groups and stuff, and I was like, "Have you guys had this problem before?" And everybody, I, everybody in the comments was like, "Yeah, this, this is just what it's like." They're like, there were like three different women in the comments that were like, "Yeah, I used to stream Minecraft all the time, and I had to stop. I couldn't take what? it anymore." Why? Why Minecraft of all games? Right, that's though, what like, I'm saying. Why Minecraft? That's what I'm saying. It's weird because like Minecraft, like and this surprised Emma in the thing. I was like, "Yeah, I haven't played this game for like seven years," and she's like, "No, it's not that old." It's like, yeah, Minecraft is like over ten years. Old. Like, it's an yeah. old game. So the kids who played it are like grown up now. Now, or in that age where they're assholes, right? Like you know, when they were eight, well, I'm pretty sure they were assholes when they were kids <laughs> yeah. too. So I remember I'm in, just, that, in that PvP sucks. server, like there'd be kids, like little tiny kids that would be in that server, like seven, eight, you know, and yeah. you know, you'd they were annoying as hell, but you know, they were just part of the ecosystem, right? You and know. you know, those kids are all now like young adults, and they're all probably grown up on Twitch. I guess you know? so. Mm. Jeez. It was a or weird streaming night. now. Yeah, or, a weird night. or streaming, or streaming. Yeah, <clears throat> but I didn't get to use my band command a lot, and I do like that command. I, uh, you start by the end of it, you were just like, yeah. <laughs> she was like just mowing them down. Well, than then we had that watching. moment last night <laughs> where oh. that guy came in. Somebody came into my chat last night, donated five dollars, and the message in the donation was, "Please unban me." Oh. <laughs> <wow>. <laughs> Uh, what was funny is that Emma stuck to her guns and was like, no. No. And uh, he comes into like Webb's chat and then he comes into my chat and seriously? like. Wait, pleading? Trying yeah, to like yeah, begging Here's to the thing. He, he wasn't pleading so much. I, I don't know. I You know me. I, I believe people could be redeemed. <sighs> he pushes it. I push uh, it. He pushes buttons. Hashtag my name. I thought he could be redeemed. So I was trying to see the good in the guy. Uh he, he ended up kicking it in our chat for a little bit, but it, one of the funny things is, like, I swore the $5 thing was going to work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I was like, like, thank you for your $5. You are not getting unbanned. I was right. like, homie, you don't know Emma. I guess money nah. can't she's buy you not, that much happiness. No, so. it can. Can't buy you uh, unbanned either. She, she's not your average bear. No. <laughs> she's hey, good, yeah. Nope. Uh, he learned the lesson the hard way, man. Good. Yeah. It, that, that's that's how cats gotta learn lessons sometimes. Hey, gotta yeah. gotta gotta hold down that band, that band hammer, bro. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That. Yeah. So I, I'm with you on that one. That'll be my entry for what you're playing as well. Uh, I hope we can get back more into that server. But it was crazy. Like I, you, I'd only known you've been playing the game for one day, 15 mm -hmm. hours. So when I was going in there, I wasn't expecting to to be as developed. Oh, yes. They're oh, developed yes. and building train tracks across the whole thing already. They've been to the Nether, slaughtered dragons. I saw yeah. a skull of some kind some, in one of the houses. Ah, uh, like, the Wither Skull. Yeah, you had the Wither Skull already. I was like, you, you guys achieved like thirty hours in your fifteen-hour play session. Jeez. I mean, there were like four or five of us that were cycling through the game. I think Aaron and I were the only ones that stayed on for the entire. 15 and a half hours but jerry came through webb came through steven came through yeah like it was it was a group effort i uh found the group of monks and i have gone to them now and i'm gonna make them my people so okay. i'm helping we'll a monk. i'm helping build about that All right. wait what happened oh. them. <laughs> i'm not i'm not entirely certain but there may have been some sort of incident they just might not be there anymore you've been in monks back. now Oh, oh wait, no. They might up? not be back, the villagers. Did my KFC blow up? 
Your what? Corey's fried chicken. No. <laughs> wow. Okay, it's still there. Corey's okay. fried chicken. Corey's fried chicken. I wanted to start my own restaurant, like a place so I, I started. Mean, hey, I, you know, you can't go wrong with fried chicken. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and chickens were a uh, plenty, so <laughs> there was chickens all over the place. Chickens for the fry. Yeah. Oh That's man. All right, I'll have go. to go check on my people. Check on your people. Uh, Eddie, have you had a chance to play video games lately? Yeah, actually, uh, I'm. I revisited, uh, or I'm revisiting Arkham Asylum, so I'm. Hey. I got the uh, the Return to Arkham package that's on uh, Xbox. Yeah. And uh, so I got Arkham Asylum and Arkham City. And uh, I started with Arkham uh, Asylum, I think, this weekend. And so I've been just playing through whenever I get time. Is this a replay one. for you? Mm-hmm. Several times. Like, I've already played that game, like, at least a dozen times. So, but it's it's fun. It was, like, one of the great standouts for Rocksteady. Yeah. So. Interesting. Well, I, I got, like, halfway through. And then I got, I played it late. I came on and late. And then Emma banned you? And yeah. then Emma banned me. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, no, City. I, I played City, like, all the way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, City's probably, so Asylum is the one that they were, like, testing out the waters and whatnot. City is the one that's really the crown achievement of all of them. And then, what was the next one? Night? Oh, Arkham uh, Arkham Knights? City was the second one. Yeah. No, no, mm-hmm. after Arkham City. Arkham Origins. Or- oh, Origins. 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 Right. We don't speak of that. Yeah, yeah that, that was one a, we don't speak of. A stinker. Of. And yeah. then Arkham Knight, yeah. Was and the then Arkham one. Knight was, a, yeah. But yeah, 2 was like the best one out of all four, in my opinion. I like 2 better than 4. What about you, Emma? You I like 4 better than 2. See, that's where we're going to have to throw You just like all those Batmobile mechanics? I do. I do like yeah, Batmobile. So that, that was, yeah, I could do without. I wish... Because like all the stuff, like all the smart stuff kind of got dumbed down by the time you got to four so it's like eh, it wasn't like part two you had puzzles you yeah. had challenges you had a lot more stuff that you had to work through in order for you to get all the riddlers riddles yeah and trophies and stuff yeah the the batmobile races for the riddler i was not a fan of i was mm-hmm. like this mechanic doesn't make sense why did the riddler build a exactly race track yeah it's like when did he have time to do any of that <laughs> like <laughs> when do any of them have time to do any of that <laughs> but yeah i'm I, i'm a huge fan of those games and so those particular two Arkham Asylum and Arkham City. I'm just, I'm revisiting those guys. I started going through Nights, and I did like the Batmobile, but it felt like there was too much, like yeah. too many mechanics. They're yeah. like, all right, now you need a grappling hook. Then while you're grappling hooked, you need to jump off, swing across to the other side while maintaining that. And I was like, I, I, I'm yeah. never going to use this skill again. And you use this game. toggle like, to, to, to point which direction you want to shoot the yeah. gun while you're driving this way. So I mean, I'll, I'm trying to have fun here. I was right? like, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm impressed that you created all this. So I was like, <laughs> just let me beat guys up. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Just hit that same button. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My favorite thing about the Batmobile is like, their justification for how you're not killing people. Like when you're just mowing people down 100 miles an hour and they're like, well, you're not actually hitting them with the car. There's an electric force field around the car. Yeah. It Thank makes God. contact with them and it, it pushes yeah. them out of the way. I'm like, no, that motherfucker's dead. Yeah, he's dead. murdered a dude. I'm like, yeah. if there's one thing we learned from Justice League and from you know, Batman, Batman versus, versus Superman, Superman, Batman kills people. Batman, yeah. Batman's a murderer. Batman's a murderer. Yeah. Yeah. Man needs to stand trial. He does. What do you want? Uh, you picked up some good points on that one. That's an oldie but a goodie. Thank so you. Uh, you just surpassed David Webb. Good job, man. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, like achievement. Curtis, what's Yo. up? Um, of course, Smash, because that's what I do. Um, but I, um, I gave Capcom some love. Um, kind of. I know a lot of people, saw, like, the game got pulled out of Resident Evil 4, but to me, it more got rooted in Resident Evil 2 when you can do uh, the hunk or tofu challenges. Mm-hmm. But uh, I was playing uh, Resident Evil uh, Mercenaries. Oh, okay. I, I don't really know. What th- you have to fill me in. Give me. I mean, you shoot zombies, and you know, like, and you have a time frame. And if you, you know, if you shoot them, and you do like the um, the melee, uh, the melee moves, like where you punch them or hit them or stab them in the chest and walk up to them and shoot them three times in the head, you get more time. But it's basically just time time game, and you just get to pop zombies. So I'm all about that with grenades and handguns and all sorts of stuff. I was just at Target the other day, mm-hmm. and uh, a couple observations, like. I don't go down the video game aisle like regularly anymore. Mm. You know, I don't know. I just got other stuff to do. I'm too busy. I'm, I'm okay. Christopher Robining. You know, nah, nah, makes sense. I'm there just to, to buy cake mix or whatever, you know, and get the fuck out. Word. But I went to the game aisle and I saw that the new Resident Evil, was it seven? Six? Seven. Seven. Biohazard? Yeah. 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 Was only like 20 bucks. Like, why? How did it's it... like a year and a half old. Is it, it's got to be like two years old now. It's about, yeah. Is yeah. It's about yeah. 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 But it's like a year or two old now. But I I don't know other games that I feel like have been out longer. Like it was like relegated to the section that's not even you don't even have to get a guy to get yeah. a key anymore. It's yeah. like on an end cap. Yeah. 
it's an end cap game now. Yeah. Should I be? Should I have bought it? It's good. Yeah. I enjoyed it. So January 24, bucks, 2017, it's real, so about a year and It's and a real yeah. gory. Yeah. Really? It's yeah. real gory. And it's one of those that like you don't have to have played the other Resident Evil 7s. Mm-hmm. Or 7s. Re- the other the Resident Evils to play it. The many <laughs> Resident Evil 7s yeah, that there are. Because um, I've never played a Resident Evil game, so I didn't I didn't pick it up until like a year after it came out. And I was like, mm. can I play this? Yeah, this one's totally a standalone in, yeah. in every sense of the word. What I yeah. liked about the plot that I remember was that, you know how it's usually so unreasonable, like... I guess in the first one they did an okay. Like, why didn't you just leave the house? Like, I guess there's a bunch of dogs and shit out yeah. there that'll kill you. But like this one, like you, how do you get yourself willingly into that situation? But I guess the dude's wife was missing and he got a yeah. phone call. So, yeah. And I was like, okay, I, I'd be at that house too. I guess. Like, yeah. Maybe lady, I would have called. Sure. The, did he try uh, calling free the cops weekend. first? Nope. <laughs> okay, that that's the. Yep. Three. And that's one of those where like. There's a shot. It's it's super. I mean, every, video games are always unrealistic. But there's a shot in the very beginning of the game mm-hmm. where you get your hand cut off. <laughs> okay. And then he wakes up, and it's like it looks like it's stapled back on, but like somebody like rudimentarily like sewed it back on. And your hand f- functions perfectly the entire game. Yeah. Cause, Nothing. Uh, it literally know. has no bearing on the entire game. You cut your hand off, somebody sews it back on, and it works perfectly. I'm like, that's hey, not Curtis, how any of this works. Hey, Curtis, let's, uh, let's try something real quick. I got a knife. Yeah, sure. Yeah, oh, all right. right. Do you need an arm? Let's go for sure. it. Just, yeah. uh, and then sew it back on. You know what I Definitely. thought well, we about that game, staples. too, is yeah. that kills immersion is that like some of the villains were like uh, bullet sponges. Yeah. And they're supposed to be like people. Yeah, there's, that's really annoying, especially the, the father figure. Because you fight him in like the garage, and you're like hitting him with the car, and you're chainsawing him, and you're it's 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 just like this is supposed to be a dude, and like there's an explanation for like what happened to them, but it doesn't change like I don't know. Yeah, it was it was it was, it was fun. It was scary. It was very very gory. Uh, it's in VR, so that's been interesting. Did you play it through VR? Yeah, I, I, that was my only VR stream that I've done. It's the only VR game that's ever made me throw up. You that's legit creepy. threw up. Legit threw up on stream. Yeah, well, not I. I went to, like I was because when you start a VR, I don't know how much like VR you guys have done, but when None. you start, like very little. I watched Lawnmower Man when I okay. was a kid, so I I'm watched good. VR Troopers. Hey, oh. <laughs> so you're an Tokosetsu. expert. There you go. <laughs> so when you play VR on a video game, um, it doesn't generally work the same way a regular game does, where like you 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 walk and you turn your head. It mm. there's a, a couple different ways that if you're walking, they'll do like angles. Where like you don't turn smoothly, you'll turn like if you press the button, it'll mm. turn you forty five degrees or forty five uh, degrees, okay. like a bit at a time, mm. and it's super annoying. Yeah. Or what Doom VR does is they do teleporting, so like you click yeah. on a spot, you're like I'm gonna go over there, and it just teleports you around. Okay. So Ooh. I turn all that shit off because it's annoying as fuck, and then I realized why that's on in the first place. Because it's <laughs> motion sickness. Yeah. You get hey. real bad. So I turned I turned it all off, and then I played a very combat heavy part oh, of it snap. for about an hour straight and then i was like on stream and i was like all right we've been on for like an hour like uh i'll be right back guys i'm just gonna go take my dog out and you know go put on a break screen and then i went and vomited everything <laughs> that was in my stomach and then i literally like i just went back into the living room and laid face down on the floor for about five minutes <laughs> room, Fanny. got up and like oh i forgot to turn off the the stream. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I and did. then I, I, got, I got back in the chair, put the VR headset back on, and got back to it. Oh, my gosh. Streamer yeah. life. I'm For good. For real. I, uh, life. I did do some <laughs> VR at it's E3 fine. like two years ago, and one of them was an indie game that didn't really have their stuff together, I feel, because it was on rails, mm. but I'd lost an entire day of just being sick. Mm-hmm. Uh, doesn't help that I was kind of hung over from the night before nope. and it was my first meeting of the day yeah, but it's part of the job I had to hand off the rest of my appointments to someone else and mm. go crash I was like dude I have to go back to the hotel and just because I'm done it workers messes comp. with you it messes with you yeah it sucks you just said like workers you're... comp yep <laughs> <laughs> just saying because like your brain your brain knows quote unquote knows that you're moving and you're walking but you're not moving yeah it's it fucks with you it, it's weird it's super weird um so it's it's one keep an eye out on the motion sickness. Keep those controls on for a little bit, That's right. or do it in like ten minute increments, or just watch a let's play and just enjoy it from that perspective that too. too. I mean, you hey, that you know, too. I'd rather watch someone else go through the loveliness that's what i'm here for that's what i'm here for we do it for you and that's why i just stick to resident evil mercenaries and when i want to get real wild 
I flipped that three D switch oh, on that no. DS. <laughs> what does the uh, do we see that trend dying? Because I remember like an E three or two ago, it was all about the VR, and Sony was coming out with theirs, and you know everyone wanted to make VR games. But it doesn't feel like this last E three people were talking about it too much. Yeah, it definitely yeah. toned down this year, at least in an, mm-hmm. at least in big announcements. There's yeah. still VR games coming out, but yeah. it's not this big push to make everything VR. Because well, yeah. everything was focused on that b- battle royale mindset. Yep, this year uh, that's that trend. So like everything in terms of like VR was. It's already been established as like software or hardware that we can use, so nobody's really excited about most games. It's all about the stuff like going back to movies, the nostalgia, nostalgia. factor. Yeah. Dude, can so. you, you're, this isn't film philosophers, bro. Give, <laughs> you know, but, uh, give it a I minute. Mean, hey, hashtag nostalgia. Yeah, so. Everything roots back to movies. So I'm just it saying. Here we go. See? Uh, but uh, Beat Saber is coming out eventually. Well, on yeah. PlayStation, it's already out on everything else. But PlayStation, it's coming eventually. As soon as that comes out, I'm gonna be glued to that VR headset. What? Wow, what is it? It's a. Uh, it's like. It's like Guitar Hero or DDR kind of a thing. And Wait a second, you you haven't seen this yet? I know the no. video went viral. Really? It's, it's literally. Okay, a guy wh- while I look this up, explain it, please. It's a rhythm game. Um, so you have your little like on the PlayStation, it'll be the move sticks, and it has you know very like electronica kind of dance music. Um, and it's just it's you just hit the right beats, and they're like lightsabers. So beat saber. Oh, e. I do. Okay, I'm looking at it now. I do remember this. But it looks so. Fun. Yeah. I, I got addicted to that video when it came out, and then I've watched people stream it. And well, they here's were... the thing. So you see it from like the perspective, like away from the the person playing. Mm-hmm. I'm interested in seeing what it looks like from the person's perspective. Yeah. Because I have yet to see that in any mm-hmm. of the Let's Plays, and that kind of scares me. I think so... that's. I think it's whatever the first video they released. I think that's what it looks like. Ah. I don't remember the first. Where video. it's just there's nobody in it. It just shows you basically. You just see the sabers. The sabers. Okay. I'm interested in like duck uh, and like move to the side. And... Yeah. That's fun. People on Twitch started getting really into those chat rooms, those VR chat rooms. Oh, that was weird. Did you watch the, any of no. those or anything? I saw VR like meme rooms. clips and shit. Yeah. Like... What's a VR chat room? It's for the ex- people that don't know, like me. So when a mommy loves a daddy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just... I thought that was a stork. It's like imagine a a room that could be set to whatever theme and then everybody in there is like it's a chat room but it's actual people picking any avatar they want no, and you walk up and you talk to each other yeah, like, what is that uh ready player one? Oh, that or yeah, like right, what is that yeah. real life or uh second life second life yeah it's like uh that's how the do you know the way meme that's blew up from. yeah because someone picked like the ugandan knuckles thing and there would, there'd be like a billion people like 20 people and they'd all just run up <laughs> all to a random clucking. person <laughs> And start what? saying the same They'd thing. They'd run up to like here. a female what? avatar and start clucking and talking about the queen and Oh my, my God. favorite my favorite meme to come out of that though was like this whole group of Ugandan knuckles that were running after this female avatar and they're doing the clucking and the do you know the way and the, the the queen queen, you know, she's the queen, whatever. And she runs to like whatever like whatever room they were in was like a, a rooftop and she just runs to the edge and jumps off. <laughs> 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 and they're like, No Oh gosh. She's like, Get me away from these people. I I don't hear too many people talking about it as much as I did back then, but mm. it's it's, uh, it looked interesting. It was fucking weird. Not like $500 interesting to where I'd pay that kind of Ooh, money to get in on it. I'm but good. I don't know. People who have like it. Like a Beals, it. man. Uh, Christopher Robin stuff, man. Hey. Nostalgia. It, it nostalgia. back to nostalgia. But what if it was Christopher Robin in VR and you could like look down and poo was in your arms and... Just poo was in your arm. Yeah, I you know. knew. Whatever. As soon as I That's, said it, um, I knew. It. Twitch <laughs> flip it. I'm good. I ain't, yeah, no. No poo no. in my arms. No poo no. in your arms. No. I can hold you. Are you ready to bowl? Emma's telling it. What? Emma's telling it. Emma's telling it. Emma's telling it. Now, Emma's telling the news. Okay. Eddie, you were unprepared. Yeah. Do you not listen to the show? Bro. It's all right. I work a nine to five. Sorry, I listen to every episode of the Philosophers, but whatever. This is, of course, this is a, a part comedy of, hour. Okay. Uh, because uh, my life has sucked the last <laughs> week and been filled with work, I have not been able to do the news. Emma has been so amazing in going through and finding the best news stories relevant to this show, Ooh. and this is the part where she uh, <laughs> tells the stories. Way to give them expectations that I'm not going to meet. I was like, <laughs> don't suck it up now. But lower those expectations right now. But we're, there are a couple things. Uh, we were talking earlier today. This is a couple weeks old, but I just 
saw it the other day, so we're talking about it now. Um, Germany has officially banned pre-orders on games with no release date or what they call a vague release date. So anything that says coming soon, can't pre-order it. Okay. Cannot put it up for sale. So what about, is that, uh, does that apply to alphas? Is that kind of what that means or what? what? I imagine if it's, like, you can still have a beta, and you can still have an, a beta phase and an alpha phase, but if your game doesn't have a release date, you cannot put it up for sale. They won't They won't do it, which I am all for. Hey. Way to go, Germany. Yeah. Way to redeem it. yourself. <laughs> oh, <damn. laughs> well, I don't know. Ooh. I don't know. Right. Uh, <laughs> well, all right. I don't know if they've redeemed themselves. <laughs> but uh, really turning the ship around over there in that country. And we love well, all of our uh, German fans. <laughs> Well, Guten Tag. Guten Tag. Uh, I, I, do you think it's a good precedent? Should, should we have something similar? I do. It actually. Should we do as the Germans? <laughs> I don't like your tone, <laughs> so I'm not going to answer. <laughs> I feel like you're trying to back me into a corner here. Wow. When in pro? When, when, in, when in Germany? When in Germany? But uh, yeah, so if it, anything that says coming soon or anything that doesn't have a solid set release date, I'll be curious to see if. I don't know. I wonder if it's one of those things where they're just not going to have pre-sales until they have a date or if game companies will start giving a date even though they're not sure it'll fit mm. and then changing it down the that line. That might even be worse. That would suck. Yeah. I'm curious. I wonder if that's like, or if I'm just being paranoid. Um, but like you can order, you can pre-order Metroid Prime 4 for Nintendo Switch here in the US, mm -hmm. but you can't in Germany oh. because there's no solid release date. Right. Um, and they haven't said anything about pre-orders like that were already open for games prior to this new rule. Uh, but so, I like it. How, all I'm all I'm hearing is this: Kingdom Hearts Three will never be released in Germany. That's all, <laughs> That's all I'm hearing out of all that. That's it. So I don't know. Fin I mean, finish your stuff. Ha have it have it fully ready to go before you put it out. Like we've seen countless times where games weren't ready or, or they were <coughs> no put out. Yeah, then that. <laughs> Thank you. That's exactly what I was getting ready to say. I was actually half expecting him to say that. No, I, I was drinking water at oh, the time. Okay. <laughs> I thought it, though. But yeah, yeah just see? just fin finish your stuff first. I, th I think things have been a little too lenient, especially within the last few years on games. Just kind of being like, oh, yeah, you know, we're it's almost ready to go, but you can pre-order now. It's, I don't think it's right to be able to just take people's money and not have, have, have only a partial product to give to them. In so, other words, the entire EA model. I haven't yeah. pre-ordered a game in forever. What do you pre-order stuff regularly, Emma? Or what's the last I thing do you did? I do sometimes um, because if I do a digital pre-order, then I can download it like before the game comes out, and then it's available to me at midnight, so I don't have to start a sixty gig download mm. at midnight and then wait for it. So like, mm. I'll probably pre-order Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Um, I'll probably pre-order the Spyro trilogy, like those kinds of things. Where like I want to be able to play it the second it's available. Okay. And like stuff that I know I'm gonna buy anyway. It's like I'm gonna. I know I'm gonna spend sixty dollars on this game anyway. Right. So, the not if you live in Germany. Yeah, not in Germany. Well, the, they have release dates. It's fine. The only no, reason I so. like it, especially like with Amazon, is that you could save like pretty good money, like twenty mm -hmm. percent or something yeah. if you pre-order. So I think I'm gonna pre-order Smash Ultimate. Of course. That'll be. The, I'll come out of my like pre-order retirement. At GameStop, it was crazy. Like they'd expect you to uh, do a certain amount. Like if and if you didn't like you, you they really push you to get those mm. reserves mm -hmm. and even if it wasn't advantageous to the person like I would be straight with most people and tell them like if I it's a straight. well I mean it's 2018 you can do whatever you want but right. the, the uh, if it was a game that I knew we were only gonna get like two or three of like yeah. some rando anime game uh, or uh, something yeah. right. I'd be like you better reserve this one yeah. like. Please do. But if it was like Madden and you know we're going to have 300 copies just in the back room yeah, forever, right. be like, you, know, you don't Dude, need you don't have to worry about like, it. Bro, yeah. let me check if there's one in the back and there's like boxes. Yeah, one boxes, yeah. One boxes. Like, oh, yeah man, you should probably pre-order. You should probably pre-order yeah. this, bro. Um, do you guys pre-order games? The only game that I <laughs> gave part of the money to pre-order was uh, 2K18. Really? Why would you pre-order that one? Because... I love basketball. Okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, oh, and but with that one, there was like a, you know, they did the thing where they had the different editions, and if you got this specific one, then you got, you know, this amount of VC or whatever. Those so. are the ones that's like, uh, if they have a good enough pre-order bonus. Yeah. That, I feel like, is worth it. Sometimes if they can entice you with that. But even then, like, I started getting wise because, yeah. like, oh, pre-order at Best Buy and you get the Sub-Zero skin for yeah. Mortal Kombat. Yeah. Right, right, Do it right. at GameStop, you get the Scorpion, right. you know? And then you go to 
there anyways and you end up unlocking them in two months and i don't know yeah yeah, yeah. It's cheap they're trying they're trying what's next uh, a little bit of esports news. Uh, I thought, <gasps> thought you might like it. Well, sort of esports news. Canada is opening its first uh, esports stadium. Hey, hey guys, why don't you uh, come over here and we'll play a game we in a boot 10 games? minutes, eh? <laughs> <laughs> you want to watch us play games, eh? Yeah, we could uh, have some french fries with gravy. Oh, eh? shoot. Hey. Oh, good, good, good game, man. Good game, eh? Good game. GG. I, I feel like Canadians are the only people who would ever sincerely say GG. Like, they're the only people that <laughs> ever probably, mean it. They probably. mean it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah, mean absolutely. it. Absolutely. GG, eh? Uh, uh, it's not new around here because uh, we got Esports Arena, which just opened up like its third location. They have one in Santa Ana in Oakland, which we just went to last week for that viewing party. And a, one that I guess is doing pretty well in Vegas. Uh, and then uh, one of our energy partners, uh, Events DC, like DC is building like a, it's kind of like a multi-purpose center. It mm-hmm. has a couple thousand people that could go there and it's supposed to be split between WNBA and Esports. Like it's supposed to be super mm-hmm. technological. They want to fill it with all the big esports events. So. Just like the Golden One <laughs> Center, how it was set up to be an esports arena. It's too big and expensive. <laughs> I think I, they, they technologically could throw the most banger events. Yeah. But it's probably like over 100K to rent that thing for a night, I'm sure. And well, yeah, pr- probably. But I mean, I would, th- I mean, you would think that with them planning, all, like putting all the planning into it, they would know h- how large it is and they would have to you know, be reasonable on the prices if they're going to truly add to it. But I'll tell you this, they're ready for when it blows all the way up. Yeah, when it goes all the way up and like, but that's the thing, like if you have an event that could fill an arena that big, you're going to go to L.A. Yep, yeah. Yeah. Center. Let's yeah. You're going to go, go to, to New York, markets. Barclays Center, you know, for Overwatch mm-hmm. League. Yep. And these cities, like, I know D.C. wants this business. Like, they're going yeah. out to the Twitch. Con- they're going out to everybody, and they're like, hey, nice. come come to our city. Come to our city. So yeah. I'm sure Sacramento's trying, but there's not enough people here. It's super expensive. Like, yeah. Wait, wait. Super expensive. To rent these space. To rent. Oh, to rent yeah. the space. Like, and, you know, Sacramento, people are going to have to travel from all over to come here. And, like, who wants to go to Sacramento? And even though we live who here. Who wants to go to the city where you got to go somewhere else to do something? Yes. Exactly. Like, hey, don't get me wrong. I'm Sacramento's biggest fan. I love Sacramento. But we still have to fight the perception. Right? And nobody goes to Sacramento for big well, events. Well, dang it. Let's fight it. Everybody, come here for your esports. It, it like it, we're not as expensive on the rooms and the lodging. We're good we're in Canada. Only, eh? We're only there. You go. <laughs> we're good in Canada. We're good in Canada. Um, there's you don't if, if you did want to go to the Bay Area, it's not like it's that far. Seriously, I mean, but <clears throat> we have stuff here. We're building it up. I say Sacramento or bust. That's host, what I say. I'm holding it down. Your esports event at the Farm to Fork Capital. Of the <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dang it, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. Yeah, yeah like honestly, Sacramento to a fault, baby. I'm Sacramento to a fault. Yeah, because we are um, still behind like right. San Jose and the Bay Area and stuff as far as like, you know, premier event locations. They're, yeah. they're saying that Sacramento, I love this term, it's the hipster gold rush. We're like, Why not? this is the best place to start businesses if you're a hipster and breweries and, you know, yeah. craft coffee places. Uh, there's all that. Like, this is the breeding ground for that. I mean, yeah. Midtown's fucking expensive as hell now. It is. It's ridiculous. Yeah. It's legit super expensive. But, you know, we're, we're growing, but I just don't think we're quite at that esports yeah. like level yet. But, hey, Canada. Way to go. Yeah, Canada, so it's in, uh, uh, it's in Richmond, British Columbia. Okay, so ha- is Richmond, British Columbia a more attractive town than but, Sacramento? Well, here, how many well, people does it It's I in mean, Canada, remember? Stadium th- th- is it's a true. very loose term here. Yeah, this is true. It seats more like a hall. <laughs> yeah, it seats 250 spectators. Oh, jeez. So yeah. It's not, <laughs> During it's the cold. week, they house weddings and bar mitzvahs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bear, bear mitzvahs. Bear mitzvahs. Bear mitzvahs. <laughs> yeah, so it's like the, the facility is called the gaming stadium which mm. i imagine is why they're calling it a stadium but yeah. it hosts you know it can seat 250 spectators 40 gaming setups so okay. it's not uh, yeah, a it looks stadium, like you, you stadium. read that wrong right. you're supposed to say a boot a boot a boot 250 spectators eh? 250 spectators <laughs> Uh, Look at these yoga hosers, eh? It does have like full streaming suites, so like streamers could go in and like have a whole setup and That's do their cool. shit. Uh, kind of like the Golden One Center. Just saying, just saying. Is there a streaming setup in the Golden One? Yes, there is. Wow. Yeah, they they built it for. Uh, Why or, not? They have Why not? they have their own esports team. Yeah. So they have the Kingsguard. Kingsguard. What? Yeah. yeah. Two K. You know about this? No. Do you live in this city, bro? Barely. Bruh. <laughs> but do you even two K? Oh, is it because they put? Yeah, because I don't. 
care no, about basketball totally. games. It's interesting. So <laughs> NBA right. did throw a bunch of money into this like NBA 2K league. The league, what, baby. Yeah, yeah. They, they have uh, like the Dallas Mavericks have a, a team. You know. Every team has a oh team. Oh my god, I want to see. Everyone. I, I want to see. I thought a it promo. was on thirty. I just I was watching it the other day and it maybe was like they've all expanded because uh, maybe. They, they didn't launch with that. But yeah, no, they didn't. They did not launch. with They're it, doing no. crazy. Like the Sacramento team gets flown to compete out to New York yeah. every week. Like, yeah, that's how much money is. So, Overwatch Good League Lord. doesn't even do that. Yeah, like, the stadium is wow. it's dope too. It's really, live in there. I, I really no want to see a Golden One Center promo of like all the kings walking in, like they're slow mo, like super cool. Like look yeah. at these, look at these big athletes, look at these NBA players. Yeah. And then like from the other end, <laughs> they're the, the esports players oh. come in and get the same like super cool, like slow mo. It's just like we play in the same arena. That's so, but, but I mean, but bear in mind like. More people are being conscious of it. De'Aaron Fox, yeah, Sacramento yeah. Kings e- point he's guard, esports guy, huge esports guy. Remember him in uh, wasn't it him in oh who To him and To up there playing? Uh, they played uh DBZ, yep, up there, and they uh, and they played some 2K on our big 4K like jumbotron. The, uh, like well, now I know De'Aaron yeah. Fox is sponsored by HyperX, yeah, like a gaming headset company. They sponsor his Twitch streams. He built a computer recently that has yep. like an LED panel on Dude, the side of Vegeta powering up. Like he's a super like yeah. DBZ fan Absolutely. streamer. Like we just did a video. Well, he was down there with Phase Clan. Yeah, they they did that video. They just posted. It's sick, man. It's but they need crazy to get this crossover. Energy work though. Oh, that's all I'm saying. Get that energy work for sure. Yeah. But yeah, it's this this it's no joke. Like it's it's growing and it's coming up. It's coming up. I had no idea. Yep. yep. There was a so if, speaking of Dragon Ball Z, uh we have a player on energy called Hook Gang God. So there's always like we talked about it if you go back a few episodes the FGC special, uh, it was like a at, at like a basic 101 is if you ever wondered about the fighting game community we had a very good panel of people who explained it Curtis was there yes, Chris sir. Fuller Jay Gist and one of the things we talked about was the term onliner and it's these guys who just play online and they're like gods but when they go in person it's like you're playing a whole nother game like because there's no lag and th- mm-hmm. those guys usually get bodied yep. quote unquote mm. and this guy, Hook Gang God, started as a ladder warrior, so it means he was like number one online, and he started showing up to tournaments, and everyone was like, oh, he's an onliner, mm-hmm. and he started winning was a thing, and he plays a really obscure character named Piccolo, if you're familiar with Dragon Ball Z. In the game, he's not that great, but he's in his hands, he's a god with it. Hey. Wow. We got a sponsorship with Sony Crackle, and we started a new series called Hooked, and like it's a legit production, and yeah. Shaq was a part of The Shaq episode just dropped today. And it was really incredible. And that's kind of where my life has been in the last week, trying to promote this uh, Sony Crackle show. And uh, it's all going to culminate this weekend at Evo. They're going to be shooting an episode live there. So everything has been building to let's see if this onliner from like a very bad area in from New Jersey can you know do this yes. rags to riches type of thing and win the biggest tournament, fighting game tournament of all time. And it's really captivating. Uh, it's free to watch. So Sony Crackle, uh, you don't even have to download like an app if you watch it on your PC. Otherwise, you have to download the mobile app. I recommend it if again if you want an extension, extended look of like esports. I thought that was the most impressive thing. Like Sony Crackle's like Netflix, and yeah. they haven't done anything with esports before, so there's always that risk of it like not being authentic or mm-hmm. them painting it in a negative light, kind of like oh right. look at these nerds type of thing. Mm-hmm. None of that. Like nice. they actually gave just a clear cut look of what his life looks like, how important this opportunity is to the dude. Good. You know, him kind of going and meeting Shaq and Shaq dropped some knowledge, man. Where? Yeah. Hey. He pulled out like a pen and started making charts and showing him like, you know, showing him mental toughness and hey. how, how it can apply to even esports. That's dope. Ridiculously wow. good, guys. But you know why it applies to esports? Because they're athletes. They are. I don't care what you say, <laughs> Skip Bayless. Yeah, well, that's right. Uh, now Colin, Shannon? Colin Cowherd. Colin Cowherd. That dude's a joke. Uh, do we have any more stories? Do you want to bust through them real quick? Real quick? Uh, yeah, you touched on Evo. Yeah. That's coming up this weekend. Uh, they're streaming it on Twitch. There's like seven different channels, seven yeah. different yeah. channels, so you can keep an eye on whatever game it is that you care about. Can't and wait. And then uh, the other news that we had was at Gamefly. Shutting down its gaming streaming service. Oh, so they are going back to physical only. You cannot stream games on Gameplay anymore as of August 31st. They have Nostalgia. To, they have to get, sh- they're getting <laughs> shut down. It has to be because everybody's doing their own now. PlayStation has the PlayStation Network, mm-hmm. Xbox. Well, if you want a conspiracy theory. I do. Mm. Uh, EA announced that it was acquiring their cloud gaming service earlier this year. 
And they also just so happen to be launching their own premium streaming gaming service, Mm. uh, Origin Mm. Access Premium. They say, the the statements all say that this decision was made before EA was even part of the picture, but if you want a little conspiracy theory, there's your little nugget right there. I was going to say, that's no conspiracy theory, that's just business right there. Word. Like, you you absorb your competition, and then annihilate them, and you just bring out your own product. Yeah, yeah. Mickey Mouse. Yeah, because the, the, the little added thing at the end of that of the article that I was looking at said, sources tell Variety that Gamefly's decision to stop its streaming service occurred before EA's purchase of the streaming tech. Everything's going to streaming. So We're going to, a, me and David Weber are going to a party tomorrow from this really interesting company uh, called Shadow that, like, I, I think their gig is they sell PCs that are cloud-based. Hmm. So, like, you pay a service or a flat fee. I don't even know. I'll, I'll be able to tell you more next week. All right. But apparently, like, your computer's just in the cloud. And you can play any game you want. Or, you know, I, I don't know how it works exactly. Interesting. But yeah. it's, we're, we're going to the cloud, people. We are. Going to the cloud. Speaking of the cloud, this episode is available all over the place on the internet. So if you have an i device, uh, Curtis, I device, yeah, i device, he, he's an expert in these. You can go to that iTunes marketplace and right. give the show five stars. Subscribe, Correct. you get the shows downloaded immediately to your phone. You don't even have to do anything. You just wake up in the morning, the episode's there. You can listen to it on your morning drive while you're bored at work, all that kind of stuff. Uh, we're on Spotify. Everybody has Spotify. Yeah. I don't know if you could rate on there, but you can stay up to date. You can follow. Yeah. There you you can? Mm-hmm. Oh, follow, follow that's the how show. I listen. That's how I listen to the show on Spotify. Okay. Is it the hey. interface nice and everything? Yeah. Okay. Because okay. it integrates with my car, so I don't even have to do anything. It just... Is right there. Hey. Doesn't even have to do anything. That's, there you go. that's the American dream. It's in the cloud. <laughs> Down. <laughs> uh, our <Nostalgia>. website. <laughs> the, the benefit to the website, if you're wondering, like, oh, if I have it on Spotify, why would I go to the website? It's for sorting the episodes, bro. So if you go to our website, you can go to the people tab. And if you love Emma Skies as much as I do, you hey. can click on her face under the host tab and you can see every episode she's been on. Eddie, the film philosopher, he's been on maybe a handful, 10 episodes maybe. Hey. If you just want to see Eddie episodes, click on his face. You see all the Eddie episodes and the film philosophers. And hey. the film philosophers. Uh, Eddie, yeah. go ahead, promote film philosophers real quick. Uh, we're on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash film philosophers, twitter.com forward slash film philosophy 101, as well as vgbstudios.com forward slash film philosophers. Uh, we're on iTunes, Google Play, Libsyn, Player FM, Stitcher, Spotify. Uh, you can catch all of our episodes drop, uh, dropping on Wednesday morning. Yeah. It's educational. That's why they do it. The film philosophers. It's mm-hmm. like Phil philosophers get it. Hey, wow. Whoa. Yeah, yes. wow. Mind, oh, mind blown. Mind blown. Yeah. I just subscribed, so I think everybody else should. There you yeah. go. Laverne and Shirley, a video game bang. Shoot. Or do you prefer Shoot. Mork and Mindy? I don't know. No. Nano, well, nano. We'll go with Laverne and Shirley. <laughs> Laverne and Shirley. <laughs> it lasted longer. All Maybe right. the uh, Frasier to Cheers. I'll take that. Oh, that there works. we go. There you go. Oh, right. It's my personal favorite. Chad can be my Niles. It's <laughs> got meta. Uh, Emma Skies, promote your stream. You have a stream schedule. Let's go through it real quick. I do. Uh, it got a little messed up because uh, I had an in- I had a little incident today. I couldn't find my wallet. But tomorrow noon, I will be streaming. I'm starting a brand new cosplay project for the month of August that I'm very excited for. So I'll start that tomorrow. Uh, Friday, I think I'm going to play Captain Spirit finally. Probably also at noon. Uh, other than that, keep an eye on my Twitter, twitter.com slash Emma Skies. Everything I have is Emma Skies. I am very easy to find wherever you wish to do so. Mm-hmm. Good thing you got that all in lock. Our, our video game bang ones are all messed up. It's like Facebook, the video game bang, video Oof. game bang, bang on one. It's, it's a disaster. That. I have to buy it from people or something. Like, uh, it's crazy. Fair Squatters. Fair uh, Curtis, what's up, man? Yo, um, man, I was talking some basketball on Sunday, but I'm going to get back to the games tomorrow. But tonight, after I leave here, being that Avengers Infinity War finally came out on yeah. digital, I'm going to do uh, a Skip and Tosh uh, commentary. So we, right. can, we can watch it together. So if you guys are down, Skip and Tosh. Yeah, SK. P S K I P N T O S H because I can spell. I was gonna say you could just look up there and. Oh hey, there's <laughs> there's my name. So yeah, um, if you if you guys are down, follow me. And if you want to watch uh, Avengers: Infinity War together, that'd be cool. Um, I'm more of a comic book head than a, a video gamer, except for when it comes to Smash. Yeah. So follow your boy. Let's do it. Follow hey, Pocket Asian. Yeah, Pocket Asian um, knows what's going down. So all right. follow me. Well, that was a great show. Thank you guys all for listening. Uh, for Emma Skies, Eddie Villanueva, Hello. Curtis Fisher, my name is Corey saying you've just been banged.